Hello. Taking a mental state examination is part of the clinical examination of a person's state of mind at a point in time and it's a structured way of observing and writing down and communicating what this is to somebody else. It's broken down into several sections and includes appearance and behaviour, speech, mood, thought, perception, cognition and insight. I'll go through each of them one by one. So appearance and behaviour. First of all appearance. What does the person look like? Are they male, female? What ethnicity are they? Are they old, young? Do they look older than their years? What are they wearing? Is this appropriate for the occasion and time of year? Are they looking after their self-care? What's their eye contact like? And can they establish a rapport with you? What's their level of motor functioning? Are they overactive and moving around a lot? Or are they very, very still and not moving at all? And include from when you saw them perhaps in the waiting room or on the ward when you see them in your room and also from taking the history. So are they tearful at times? Do they get angry and storm off out the room and come back again? Do they look worried, distressed, anxious, exuberant, angry? What's their facial expression like? Is it restricted at all? All these things. So it's not just like that moment when you're looking at them and writing it down. Be writing it down while you're taking the history. With speech, I tend to write whether it's spontaneous or not. Whether the person is happy to give information of their own accord or whether they just answer questions that are put to them. And then you can talk about the form, the rate, the rhythm, the fluency. So... A word spoken very fast one after the other or are there breaks in between does it appear to be a bit muddled up and then the volume is somebody speaking in a normal volume or raising their voice shouting or speaking very quietly some people talk about the content of speech which is basically ex the externalization of thoughts but I, I put that under the thought section rather than the speech section for me, it's more a mechanical thing. You know, is it normal rate, volume, rhythm and fluency and what's abnormal about it? So it could be no spontaneous speech, person spoke in a quiet, dull, monotonous voice with little speech content, for instance. Or it could be patient spoke very loudly with pressured speech and flight of ideas. Going on to mood... This is subjective and objective and also includes affect. So subjectively, you could ask somebody, oh, so how have you been feeling in yourself recently? Or for instance, oh, it seems as though you've got lots of ideas for your future at the moment. How would you say your mood is? Or you've told me a lot of worrying things. How has that affected your mood recently? And then once you've got, you know, whether somebody feels high or low or whatever, then ask about biological symptoms of depression. So it, how are you eating? How are you sleeping? What are your energy levels like? How's your concentration and memory? Do you ever feel guilty about things? Do you ever feel as though life's not worth living? Have you had any suicidal thoughts? Have you made any plans? What stopped you from doing anything? Do you have any hope for the future? And at the end of mood and suicidal thoughts ask if the person has any thoughts of harming somebody else which is a risk factor that we need to ascertain it may be their child or partner it doesn't easily fit anywhere probably more under thoughts but it's easy to forget so if you're asking about harm to oneself you could ask about harm to others then under the section mood going on then to thought that will include form and content with Form. If it's normal, then you can easily understand what somebody is saying. If it veers off in different directions and it's difficult to follow, as long as it's not you because you're tired or distracted or for whatever reason not concentrating properly and you can't follow somebody, it may be that they have thought disorder, even if you can't describe the phenomenology accurately. 
So somebody might have flight of ideas where there's a little link between one sentence or thought and another, or people may jump from one topic to another with no connection between the things that they're saying at all. Or they may use new words, neologisms, or their words just all be totally jumbled up and not understandable. People may describe their thoughts as muddled or jumbled. Then going on to content, what are people thinking about? Are they thinking about all these amazing schemes they're going to do because they've got so much energy and they're so wonderful and God's given them these amazing abilities? Or are they feeling really sad and don't think they can carry on and they haven't even got any limbs anymore so they can't move, so what's the point of it all? Or they're really anxious about how clean things are and I've got to keep cleaning because the, my children may get ill because of the bugs and I know it's stupid but I've still got to do it and it's so annoying because it takes up all my time and I've done it once and nothing looks any different but I'm just so sure that everything's dirty and I have to do it again and i just so cross about it all. Or... Oh. It's really true and nobody believes me, but the FBI really are after me. There are cameras up in the corner of the room. Can't you see them? Do you think they're trying to get you as well? Look outside, there's a red car. Oh no, there's a blue one afterwards. That means that they're definitely on their way. They're going to come and get me in the next 10 minutes. I really don't know what to do. I'm so frightened. So under here you record delusions. So delusions of grandeur or nihilistic delusions, or obsessional thoughts, overvalued ideas, persecutory delusions. Then are there any disorders of the possession of thought, any delusions that somebody's thoughts are being broadcast? So people might think that other people know what they're thinking, or do they experience thoughts being taken out of their head? Objectively, that will appear like thought block, but the person may experience it or believe it to be because thoughts are taken out of their head. Or extra thoughts being put in their head and people think that they have thought insertion. Going on to perceptions now. Well, we've got several senses and people can experience abnormalities in any sensory modality. But the commonest hallucination is auditory. You could ask if somebody hears a voice when nobody else can or when there's nobody there. Is it one, two or many voices, male, female? What are they saying? Are they talking about them, arguing about the person? Are they forming a running commentary on what the person's doing? Are they telling the person to do something? And then do they hear it inside their head or outside their head with their ears? Or if they're seeing something, what are they seeing? Is it in their mind or in external space? What is it? Is it clear or patchy? What does it look like? What olfactory? What do they smell? Etc. And also, what do they believe that the voice or the thing that they're seeing, what's the meaning of it? What, who, what do they think it is? And their beliefs about that would come under thought content. We next go on to cognition. I learnt way back... M-A-O-I, monoamine oxidase inhibitors. So me memory, attention and concentration, orientation and intelligence. So for memory, you probably don't need to formally test any of this because you can probably gauge things from a person's history. And what's their long-term memory like? Can they remember their personal history and significant events in their life? What's their short-term memory like? I mean, you could do the mini mental state examination if there are any concerns about somebody's memory. Then attention and concentration. You could do the serial sevens or saying world backwards. Are people distracted? Are they able to follow what you're saying? Orientation. Is the person orientated in time, person and place? Then intelligence. Just generally from somebody's vocabulary, from their history, their level of schooling or occupational functioning. Then we go on to insight. What I tend to think is, does the person believe they're ill? Do they believe they need any medication or any other treatment for their illness? And then do they believe they need to be in hospital? Now, nobody's got 100% insight or 0% insight people will be on a scale. Somebody may say, no, I don't need to be in hospital, I don't need any medication, but take it freely without comment. There must be some part of them that 
that realises they are ill, even if they won't openly admit it to somebody else or maybe not to themselves even. So, in summary, we've talked about mental state examination, which is appearance and behaviour, speech, mood, thought, perception, cognition and insight. Thank you for listening. I hope it's been helpful. Remember to like and subscribe. Bye for now.